This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome visitors, welcome church family. It is a joy as always to have you here. You know, I hadn't originally planned on sharing this today. Just when I woke up, I felt like the Lord put it on my heart. But something that I feel is so important, as when we, just as important as when we confess our sins to God, is to also believe by faith that we are forgiven. So when you confess your sins and then later down the road, you're feeling guilt and shame for those things, that is not of the Lord. When you confess your sins with a pure heart, God says that he just justifies you. Do you know what that word justifies means? It means just as if I'd never done it. Just as if I'd never done it. So when you pray and ask the Lord to forgive you from a sincere heart, you can feel joy and gratitude when you finish. There is so much power in receiving by faith God's forgiveness. So even today as we worship, let's be full of joy and gratitude that we are now the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Stand with us, Lord Jesus, we pray. We take our crowns off our heads and we lay them before your throne because we can trust and know that your rule in our lives is better than our rule in our lives. We pray that you'd help us to do the next right thing and to trust that as we obey you and, and live in your kingdom, that things will be the way they should. We know that you have the best in mind for us. So we trust you, and we pray it in the very strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, God loves you, and so do I. for the message, Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. 
Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. There's a wonder in our midst, a wonder in our midst, a power that exists, a power that exists in you, Jesus. There's a wonder in our midst, a power that exists. There's a love that captivates, a love that captivates, a beauty that awaits. That awaits in you, Jesus. There's a love that captivates, a beauty that awaits. Your miracles now echo through like a mighty wind, like a mountain move. Let hope.
Hannah and I are so happy you've joined us in worship today. And we'd like to say thank you for all the ways you continue to support the Hour of Power's worldwide mission. God is on the move and great things are happening. You know, love is the essence of everything good in the world. And while millions of words have been written, sung, and spoke about it, it remains a mystery until it's put into action. Thankfully, Jesus Christ is love personified, and he invites us to embrace a relationship with him so we can fully experience its wonder. Because God loves us perfectly, we can follow his spirit, learn from his example, and live every day in response to his goodness. As we internalize our identity as His beloved, He uses our faith to deliver help, hope, and encouragement to others. In fact, that's exactly what you do when you support this ministry. For over 50 years, Hour of Power has been proclaiming the transformative love of the Lord and empowering people of all ages to take hold of the very best and brightest future in Him. As we embrace new rhythms in this back to school season, it can be helpful to have tangible reminders of God's heart around us. Being surrounded by divine encouragement keeps us anchored in Him so we can bless and uplift our friends and family. This is the vision behind our Love, Joy, Grace special offer. For your gift of $75 or more, we'll send you the Love, Joy, and Grace collection which includes a box set of four magnets and a matching canvas tote bag. The magnets, which feature the phrases, love is spoken here, joy is chosen here, grace is given here, and love, joy, grace, will be a reminder of the love, joy, and grace that our Savior gives us every day. The canvas tote bag imprinted with the same positive phrases is perfect for carrying books, groceries, or other goodies in both a sustainable and inspirational way. With your gift of $100 or more, we'll also include a matching throw pillow. Adorned with the same blue and green floral motif as the tote bag, this soft and comfy home decoration boasts the phrases, love is spoken here, joy is chosen here, grace is given here. Call, write, or go online and request the Love, Joy, and Grace collection. For your gift of $75 or more, we'll send you the four-piece magnet set and the canvas tote bag, or for your gift of $100 or more, we'll also include the throw pillow. Your support is making it possible for millions of people around the world to step into their best life through the transforming power of the gospel. While we anticipate fall and greet this back to school season, Hannah and I are praying that the Holy Spirit will fill you to overflowing with his wisdom, grace, and peace. Thank you and remember as always, God loves you and so do we. Drew and Melanie Interline are a husband and wife who've been performing as Interline since 2014. With a passion for ministry, they lead worship and also write and record meaningful songs to encourage and uplift listeners. Earlier this year, they signed a contract with BEC Recordings and released their newest EP, Colors Bright. Please welcome Enterline. Enterline, hi, welcome back. So glad to have you in the house. So good to be back. Drew, I'll have you know our executive pastor who loves guitar tread to steel the sport of pedals, and I, I stopped him. So you <laughs> that's, right, that's right. Anyway, no. Welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Um, first, I would just say uh, it's been what, like 2008 since you were here, and what a crazy three years it's been, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's been a crazy. Or not 2008, 2018. Yes. <laughs> mm, yeah. yeah. So it's been three years. Yeah. yeah. I heard laughter in the choir. They always help. <laughs> So uh, what a crazy time for musicians, huh? How, how has it been for you uh, during this season? Yeah, it's been, um, it's been a challenging time, but an awesome time as well. Uh, we've been um, writing and working on new music. And as mentioned, we uh, partnered with a record label to put out some new music. And you know, it's definitely been a challenging time, but so rewarding as well to, as we started writing for this new record, this new EP that just recently came out. And um, it was such a great time just to connect with, just via technology now, we were able to do it via Zoom this time. So that was a little different for us but in, our, in the writing process, just writing with some friends over Zoom. But it was so awesome just to have that technology now to, yeah. we can still do it. 
And that is really cool. One of the things, like the song you just sang is from your new album, and uh, I just was listening to the lyrics. They're so good, and it's really interesting. I don't know how many musicians do this, but to think of you having a team working on your lyrics and through Zoom, you know, what's that process like? And how come you have more people, like a lot of musicians are like, don't touch my art, but you guys aren't that way at all, it sounds like. Oh yeah, definitely. Collaborating is better, you know, yeah. like more creatives involved, the better. And so it's been really cool to be doing this together, but then also bringing others in the process. Um, that have gifts and talents for the same things. So. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I, I, one of the things I love about you guys is that you do ministry as a couple, and you don't see that a, a, a ton. You see it like 30% or something. But in my experience, rubbing shoulders with a lot of people in ministry, pastors, you see a lot of pastors, but not even half, you know, doing it as a couple. But you very, see very few worship leaders, I feel like, worshiping together or doing music together. Is that, do you feel like that gives you guys more power? That's a good experience for you? Or do you ever just want to like, I wish, like, I need a break, or like, how is that, what is that like it's for you? It's so funny hearing like different perspectives with people, like they're like, I could never do that with my spouse, you know? So I'm not saying it's like perfect 100%, like always, like, but I, it's really such a gift, it's such a blessing um, to be able to meet through the worship circle, like locally, and yeah. then be able to work on that together. Definitely, like you said, like it brings a different dynamic and power. Um, that and we're then, able to share with And others. then now as a couple, we have even more inspiration because we just welcomed a brand new baby yes. girl. So. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, yeah her awesome. name is Indy Ray, and she was a part of this whole process with our EP and music um, while we were writing it and um, filming and all these different things. It's been such a joy to extend that with our family. I feel like we're going to look at it as more of like a family ministry too, even yes. more so now. Yeah, so. awesome. Well, I love your new album. It's called Colors Bright. I want to recommend if you're watching at home that you get a copy of this album. You can find out more about Enterline by going to Enterline Music. What do you guys hope that people will get when they listen to your album? Definitely. Well, like you were mentioning, like with this past year, what we've all been going through, we can see that there is so much fear and division in our world, but we just pray and hope that we could just point people to Jesus and his love and the power and hope that he brings. So. Amen. All right. Yeah. Interline, thank you so much thank for being with us so today. Much. It means the world. We appreciate you. So good appreciate to be back. It. All right. God bless you. Thanks. Thank you.
Anna and I are so happy you've joined us in worship today. And we'd like to say thank you for all the ways you continue to support the Hour of Power's worldwide mission. God is on the move and great things are happening. You know, love is the essence of everything good in the world. And while millions of words have been written, sung, and spoke about it, it remains a mystery until it's put into action. Thankfully, Jesus Christ is love personified, and he invites us to embrace a relationship with him so we can fully experience its wonder. Because God loves us perfectly, we can follow his spirit, learn from his example, and live every day in response to his goodness. As we internalize our identity as His beloved, He uses our faith to deliver help, hope, and encouragement to others. In fact, that's exactly what you do when you support this ministry. For over 50 years, Hour of Power has been proclaiming the transformative love of the Lord and empowering people of all ages to take hold of the very best and brightest future in Him. As we embrace new rhythms in this back to school season, it can be helpful to have tangible reminders of God's heart around us. Being surrounded by divine encouragement keeps us anchored in Him so we can bless and uplift our friends and family. This is the vision behind our Love, Joy, Grace special offer. For your gift of $75 or more, we'll send you the Love, Joy, and Grace collection which includes a box set of four magnets and a matching canvas tote bag. The magnets, which feature the phrases, love is spoken here, joy is chosen here, grace is given here, and love, joy, grace, will be a reminder of the love, joy, and grace that our Savior gives us every day. The canvas tote bag imprinted with the same positive phrases is perfect for carrying books, groceries, or other goodies in both a sustainable and inspirational way. With your gift of $100 or more, we'll also include a matching throw pillow. Adorned with the same blue and green floral motif as the tote bag, this soft and comfy home decoration boasts the phrases, love is spoken here, joy is chosen here, grace is given here. Call, write, or go online and request the Love, Joy, and Grace collection. For your gift of $75 or more, we'll send you the four-piece magnet set and the canvas tote bag. Or for your gift of $100 or more, we'll also include the throw pillow. Your support is making it possible for millions of people around the world to step into their best life through the transforming power of the gospel. While we anticipate fall and greet this back to school season, Hannah and I are praying that the Holy Spirit will fill you to overflowing with his wisdom, grace, and peace. Thank you and remember as always, God loves you and so do we. Would you stand with us? We're gonna say this creed together as we do every week. Hold your hands out like this as a way of receiving from the Lord. Let's say this together. I'm not what I do. I'm not what I have. I'm not what people say about me. I am the beloved of God. It's who I am. No one can take it from me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to hurry. I can trust my friend Jesus and share his love with the world. Today I'm going to talk about how near God is to you. What we feel and what is true is not always the same thing. It's easy to feel like so-and-so doesn't love me when in fact you just make them nervous. <laughs> you know, it's easy to feel uh, like you're sick when you just didn't get a good night's sleep. Feelings have a way of fooling us and understanding what's really happening. We shouldn't not feel we shouldn't ignore our feelings. Our feelings are very important. But it's easy to feel like God is far away when he is so close to you. Jesus Christ stands with you right now. And one of the ways we can feel that Christ is close is through meditative prayer. The same way that an antenna causes a radio to receive and feel a signal, if you're feeling anxious, worried and stressed out, drop your shoulders, relax, put your antenna into the air, and, and bring your stuff to God 
and watch how that has such a big impact on how you feel. Many of us are feeling anxious today, especially today. And I want to encourage you to, Hannah and I just put a, a video up on my Instagram where we're going to be praying for people tomorrow. If you need prayer or if you want to pray for people, go check out those comments and be a part of that prayer chain. I, uh, it was interesting because on Instagram I actually saw a doctor that was, it wasn't a religious thing at all, it was a medical doctor who was talking about science and he said, we've just discovered that one of the ways a person can feel less worried and less stressed out is by doing this simple practice. Sit back in your chair, drop your shoulders, put your eyes and chin up to the sky and just relax and you will feel yourself overcome with peace. What does that look like? Watch, what does this look like? <laughs> I thought this secular doctor is praying. There is something about doing this, even physiologically, that channels something in the same way that fake, you can't fake a smile, did you know that? If you fake a smile, it makes Real dopamine and endorphins happen in your body where you kind of feel a little happier? Try it. It's really hard to fake a smile. I'm going to try real quick. All right, hold on a second. Hold on. I'm going to try. <laughs> See? It gets you. It gets you. Uh, in the same way, there are, it's, we always so easily separate the spiritual from the physical. But isn't it weird that these things that our ancestors have done for thousands of years still work today? If you're feeling stressed, scared, worried about the future, I want you to know Christ stands with you. Open your heart and your mind and even your body to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to bring peace in your life today. He loves you just as you are. Satan wants to trick us into thinking that there are all of these things between us and God. All of these things that if we open our heart and mind to God, he'll be like, well, but first, what about that? God does want to help us. He does want to make us better. But rest assured that all of your sins and fears and shames, well, my friend, all of that was worked out on the cross. As Hannah said, great line, justified means just as if I'd, what is it, done nothing or something? Never done it. Just as if I'd never done it. That's Oklahoma for you. <laughs> Never been done. So today, you know, I want you to know that in a world full of fear and worry, God has called you to be an unhurried, joy-filled, life-giving, peaceful presence. That's who you already are. Believe it and begin to step out in faith in that and watch what God will do. It's really cool. Amen. The Bible says perfect love casts out fear. But make no doubt about it, fear is also the only thing that will cast out Christian love. Fear casts out love. Fear casts out love. We are scared to death of people we should be loving. You can't be afraid of somebody and love them at the same time, can you? It's very hard. Dallas Willard told a story when he was walking into a hardware shop and there was a pickup truck with a dog in it and the window's down a little bit. And he watched a man not paying attention walking towards the hardware store and of course the dog erupted in barking startled the man and he jumped back and looked at the dog and said, stupid dog, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. He was scared, that's all. The man didn't hate dogs. He was just scared. So many of us, you can feel it in your body. The fear, the worry. When you wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and you remember that thing, and you can't go back to sleep, and it keeps you awake. You don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be afraid. The love of God is all over you. The favor of God is all over you. 
And so often, so much of our fear is driven by our need and desire to control outcomes. My friend, those outcomes are in God's hands. And let me tell you, that is the best place they can be. I don't want to be in control of my outcomes anymore. I'm not very good at it. What I can do is learn to be a disciple of Jesus, to love the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul and everything within me, and love my neighbor as myself. And I know if I can accomplish that well, well, God will take care of the rest. Just give me wisdom, Lord, and I know you'll take care of the rest. I know that if you walk today trusting and believing that the Holy Spirit is swirling around you even though you can't see him, just like radio waves going through this building right now, the Spirit of God is all around you at work in your life, at work in your kids and your grandkids, at work in your job and in your ministry and in the lives of your neighbors. The more you can see that with your heart's eyes, the more power you'll have to stop being afraid of the future, afraid of the government, afraid of your neighbor and afraid of your enemies, of being afraid of everything around you and simply saying, he's got the whole world in his hands. And that is the best place for things to be. And you will be enabled to fill a very scared and worried world with the loving presence of Jesus Christ. And that's what we need. Give me Jesus, Lord. The world is afraid right now, isn't it? It's a lot of fear. Fear of shots and variants and nations at war. Fear of politics and especially politicians. And it connects us to the fears that we have about our marriage, our midlife, end life, beginning of life crises, our kids not doing what we want them to do, or not being with the people we want them to be with, or the jobs that you know, we're doing that we train for that we don't like, but we got 12 years or eight years of school and $200,000 of debt, our friends or lack therein. See, it's all connected. Our fear about what's happening in the Middle East is connected to the fears we have for our grandkids. It's all connected. It's in our heart. It's not logical. It's here. We feel it. And so when we yield everything to the Lord, see, here's the thing. We think we get worse at those things. But the truth is, we get better. It doesn't mean we stop caring. It doesn't mean we stop doing what's right. It doesn't mean we stop being responsible. It simply means we say, Lord, I'll do my best and forget the rest. Lord, I'll do my best and abandon the outcome to you because I know that you have the whole world. You have my life. You have my friends' lives, my kids' lives in your hands. I'm not going to worry anymore. I turned 40 this year and that causes a man to think. I've been a pastor for almost 20 years. I had no right becoming a pastor at the age of 20, but it was God's will and it happened. And because of that, I, I think I've had a, a sort of stiffer 20 years than a lot of other people have. A lot of trauma, not my personal trauma, but a lot of other people's things, a lot of funerals. I've had a lot of friends die. You probably have too. And it, and it causes a person to think about the world and about the way of things. One thing I can say for sure is people are bad at predicting. That is for sure. That is for sure. The more someone gets paid to predict something, the worse they are at it. The older someone is, the better they are at predicting things. That is also for sure. I would trust my grandma's prediction over the Fed's prediction any day of the week. Just look at their record. And most of these people that predict things, most of them, at best, are about 50% right. Well, how much better is that than flipping a quarter, Irene? <laughs> You've become the like sound guy on like the Tonight Show. I'm really sorry. You need to like have a guitar and just like hold it. Next week. That's good TV. <laughs> Think about it honestly. Think about how bad we are at predicting. I heard someone say once, 90% of the things I'm worried about that never even happened. I remember, you remember Y2K? Isn't it amazing to think that the year 2000 was 20 years ago? It's supposed to be like 10 years ago. 
It was a lot longer than that. I graduated high school in 1999. That was an interesting year to finish high school because there was a lot, if you remember, a lot of anxiety about what the year 2000 would look like. And the worry was our world had very quickly shifted to a dependence on this new thing called a personal computer. It had only been around for about five or six years on the desks of everybody, but now all of our books and accounting, everything, it was on this th these websites. And the fear was there were only two digits, not four. So it said 99 instead of 1999. And the fear was when that 99 turned to zero, well, the whole world would go to zero right along with those numbers. Do you remember this? You, everybody was worried. What happened? Nada. Smooth as silk, man. Smooth as silk. Nothing happened. And yet I remember in 2007, all the predictions about how much better the market would be in 2008, and you better not miss out. And when we hit rock bottom and it started to recover in 2008, all these predictions about how much better things would get in the markets. And then there was another dip. A lot of people forget that in 2010. That was just as bad as the first. And all these guys still have their jobs. Does that drive anybody else crazy? At least find a new guy to be wrong. Don't go with the guy that you know got it wrong last time. <laughs> Oh, and Trump's election, don't get me started. Without any, okay, without any po political opinion, I remember, I did the Trump fingers, did you notice that? Without any, without any political, I remember where I was when Trump got elected. I was in a little town with Hannah called Braunschweig in Germany, and I remember watching TV, there was only one station in English, Air France, don't, I don't know why it was in English. And this was their guess. 98% chance that Hillary Clinton would win, a 1% chance that Trump would win, and a 1% chance that other would win, like Mickey Mouse or something. <laughs> Can I just say, we're just bad at predicting stuff. And does it do us any good anyway? We're bad at it. I think the world today has a lot of predictions about what's coming in the next five or 10 years. Stop, it's not helping anybody. I don't wanna hear about blood moons. I don't wanna hear about changing tides. I don't even wanna hear about politics or any of that stuff. Just give me Jesus. Just give me the Lord. There is no way we can predict what will happen in America or Afghanistan, or Eurozone, or China. And unless you're the president or a senator, there's very little we can do about it. What we can do is be who God called us to be now. Different, not anxious, not worried, not afraid, but anti-fragile. You know what that means? Anti-fragile means you thrive in chaos. It means you thrive in chaos. It means that God has put something inside of you that if things go really bad, well, you'll be just fine. And if things go really good, well, you'll probably be fine then. And that is who you are. It's more about becoming who God's called you to be than preparing for some bad or good thing to happen. Trust me, friend, that's a better way to live life. I stopped predicting things a while back. I still do it out loud sometimes, but I try to not do it anymore. And this is a problem. If you think of yourself as an intellectual, you're always like trying to play chess with life. There's too many pieces. Just trust the Lord and be at peace. And only then will you be able to, to be free to love your neighbor. It's like a Chinese finger trap. You remember those from Chuck E. Cheese, those Chinese finger traps? Have you ever seen those? They're funky looking, aren't they? They're like rainbow bamboo things. And you put your fingers in like this. And then you pull your fingers out, you can't get them out. You remember how to get them out? You gotta lean into it, huh? The only way to get it out is to get the trap to relax. The more you pull, the harder it will feel. And that's how life is. You gotta, you gotta relax. You gotta relax. So many of you 
have an amazing destiny before you. But for some of you, I feel like God wants to say, it will be unlocked the day you stop worrying about it. You will get it the day you let it go. You will get it the day you let it go. Let it go. Trust the Lord in faith. And why? He's got, he's got some good things in store for you, my friend. Good things in store for you. I can't wait to celebrate with you when you cross that line. The kingdom of God is all around us. Jesus is standing with us even now in this building. He's standing next to you. Can you feel him? He's right there. He's right next to you. Hand on your shoulder. Loving hand. Not judging. Not angry. He loves you. The way a father, perfect father, loves a child. The way a great teacher loves a student. The way your best friend loves you in your hardest time. That's how the Lord is with you right now. Just feel it. Just open your heart to it. Let, feel it in your spirit. Can you feel that? He's here. So see, when we worry about things, we, we want to solve it the world's way. We, gotta, we, have to, we have to lift it into the kingdom of the heavens, which is a, a reality all around us that's happening all the time that's way more powerful than what we see in the natural. Uh, that brings us to the passage for today in the letter to the Philippians. Paul planted the church in Philippi with his friend Luke. Luke writes about it in the book of Acts. Philippi is an amazing, was an amazing city. It was a colony of the Roman Empire. This is going to be important in the way that Paul writes to the church in Philippi. A colony was different than a big city that was annexed. It means that on this hill there was nothing and then they built something. And that something was supposed to be another Rome. This was sort of the main city now in Macedonia. It was built by Caesar Augustus. And the intent was that if you went to Philippi, even though it was thousands of miles away from Rome, it would feel like you were in Rome. So you could say that it was a beachhead of Rome on the edges of the Roman Empire in order to be a safe place and an example of what Rome could be if only you went there. When Paul and Luke arrive in Philippi, led by the Spirit, they go down to the river because they hear there's a place to pray. That would make sense. Jews in, that are outside of Israel would usually pray by a river because if you're going to have a synagogue or a time of prayer, you have to wash yourself first. And in order to wash yourself, you have to mikvah. Mikvah means that you wash your heart. Your chest, Lord, give me a clean heart. You wash your hands, give me clean deeds. You wash your head, Lord, give me clean thoughts. And you wash your legs, Lord, guard my ways. And so they went down to the river and they found some people there praying. One woman who had been influenced by Judaism named Lydia, who says she was a, a worshiper of God, which meant she was probably sympathetic to Judaism. And this is one of the big standouts. She dealt in purple. Everybody would have been like, whoa, whoa. Don't you wish if you dealt in purple, people would say that about you? Oh, well. Purple was a big deal in the Roman Empire. Only a handful of people could deal in purple because purple was a special dye that was very hard to come by. I don't know if this is true. I read somewhere it would take 2,000 of these special seashells to create one ounce of purple dye. That's a lot of dead crabs, Anna. And the reason purple was so special is because it was the color and only royalty could use it. So she dealt directly with Caesar's family. Lydia was a woman of power, influence, fame, and especially wealth. And when Paul told her the gospel, she went for it, hook, line, and sinker. She was into it. You see, Luke, who writes the gospel of Luke, is always painting and showing Jesus' kingdom, the kingdom of the heavens, versus this other kingdom, the kingdom of Rome. They had a lot in common, by the way. Both claimed to have the king of kings and the lord of lords. Both used this word called the gospel, or the good news, to proclaim the coming of their king. Both believed that their kingdoms would be Catholic, meaning it would be universal everywhere. And both proclaimed this idea of Pax, peace, or shalom. That only peace would happen when their king reigned. So Luke, reflecting on Jesus' teachings about the kingdom of heaven, loves to compare 
the physical kingdom of Rome that was obvious to everyone and the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven that was in direct opposition to that Roman kingdom. Lydia is an example of someone who was completely immersed in the kingdom of Rome and didn't want their king of kings, didn't want their lord of lords or their gospel. She wanted Jesus. And it was in her house that the church in Philippi was planted and began. And as a wealthy woman, she likely used her resources and means to cause that church to flourish and to grow and to thrive within Philippi, which is really good news. I want you to be careful, my friend, when you look at the power, worldly power and worldly fame and worldly wealth. It's alluring. But there's nothing more alluring than the joy that can be found in a Christian life. I know. Your faith, when you're on fire for God, and full of his hope and life and peace is way more alluring to the world than what the world has. As the world has is brittle, passes quickly, withers in the sun. That's not for you. It's not for me either. So when Paul is writing to the church in, the, in Philippi, he says to them, he uses this Roman phrase, your citizenship is in the heavens. And what he's saying is the same way that Rome hopes to have in a colony in Philippi an example of what Rome really is. That's who you are. You are a beachhead. This translation, by the way, heaven, is so irresponsible by Bible translators. In Greek, it actually says the heavens. For Jews and early church Christians, Heaven wasn't just where I went when I die. Heaven, there were three levels of heaven. The first was the very air around me. Like I'm walking through heaven right now. It's air. The birds are flying through heaven. Trees are growing into heaven. Mountains go into heaven. That was the first level. The second was outer space. The stars and the planets in the sky. And then the third was heaven, home of the angels and the throne of God, where we go when we die if we're clothed in Christ. So when you say the kingdom of the heavens, when you say just heaven, it's easy to think that, oh, that means I'm going to go to heaven when I die. And of course you will, but that's not what Paul is saying here. He's saying, in you, heaven is in Philippi. In Philippi as it is in heaven. Or we might say, in Irvine as it is in heaven. That all around us, the kingdom of the heavens, the will of God is being done and his presence and his spirit are all around us. In the short term, it's so hard to think that things will go in a good direction. But God thinks in much longer and broader terms than we do. And so, he says to the church in Philippi, be that presence. And then in Philippians chapter 4, he mentions two women in the church who were great leaders and preachers and and uh, did a lot of work with Paul and how they're arguing with each other. And I don't have time to get into it now, but they have a lot of good reason to be anxious. Things were not going well in Philippi for the church. I mean, it was growing and flourishing, but they were afraid. And they, had, they didn't need to be afraid. But you can see it here. When fear permeates a congregation, people begin to turn on each other. When fear permeates a nation its citizens begin to turn on each other. Fear casts out Christian love. The more you feel fear and worry and anxiety go up in your body, the more defensive you feel and the more frustrated you feel with, with other people, the more blame you you're, are to cast, the more judgment you are to feel towards others. And that is not you. My friend, you can relax. Do your best. Obey the Lord, always do what's right, but then abandon outcomes to God. And that's what Paul says. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. That means just be like celebrating, like beaming with positivity and joy for good reason. Rejoice. 
I say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness, everybody say gentleness. Don't you wish the, ch the church was known for its gentleness? Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. See, there it is. He's right around us. He's in the space around us. Don't be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. That means it doesn't make any sense logically in the natural, but you get this thing that comes in your mind. It will guard your heart. Our hearts need to be guarded, don't they? And it will guard your mind. Our minds need to be guarded, don't they? And you'll be able to be the person God's called you to be. See, I'm not very good at this. I'm getting better, though, but the Lord has put people in my life that when I start to spin my wheels and get worried, they'll just reach their hand out and put it on my shoulder and just start praying. My friends, a lot of them don't even ask if they can pray for me anymore. They just start praying for me. And I can instantly feel as I hand the thing over to the Lord, I say, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. When you're less worried, less hurried, less anxious, we sort of unconsciously think that we'll be worse at it or less responsible. But yeah, that's not you. When we become less worried, hurried, and anxious, we get better at everything, especially loving people who need it the most. Amen. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. You're doing a lot better than you think. The Lord is with you right now, not angry at you. He's not frustrated with you. You might be frustrated with yourself. Let it go. Believe the word of God. And allow the Holy Spirit to do a good thing in your heart and mind today. And just relax. And watch him do a good thing. Father, we love you. Stand with us now in our hour, Father. Many of us are facing many things. Things we can't control. We give those things to you. We trust, Lord, that if they're in your hands, it's better than if they're in our hands. And we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. channel yet? If not, then I hope you will. Our power is filled with uplifting content to nourish your spirit and help you grow closer to Jesus. We've created this channel to remind you that no matter who you are or what you've done, God loves you and so do we.